Welcome, everybody, as the American Space Museum brings you Stay Curious. I'm Mark Marquette, and I'm so glad to be here with Triple T. Yes, sir. Travis Todd Thompson, closeout crew lead on the last space shuttle missions yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and we've loved having him give us his Tales from the White Room, personal tales about his experiences of putting over 300 astronauts in those five beautiful shuttle orbiters. Yeah. And we're going to talk about some of that today. We've got a couple cool. anniversaries we're thinking about today. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, two shuttle flights we're going to talk about. But uh, first, I want to talk about something uh, that is in the night sky, of course. Ta-da, I'm the stargazer. There's <laughs> the, uh, we don't want that. We want to go there. Yeah. There we go. We got the planet Venus is that the is bright awesome. star that is in the west after sunset. Of course, it's not a star. Night. It's Venus. This is what it looks like last night. Yeah. Uh, this is a photograph from a buddy of mine in North in North Carolina, Johnny Horn. Cool. And it has a half moon phase, a, a quarter phase there. Perfect. Uh, just yeah. like our moon does, because Venus and Mercury have phases because they're between the Earth and the sun right. and so we're seeing the backside coming around to venus and by december it's going to be a thin crescent okay. and it's still going to be super bright and christmas week it's going to duck below the horizon and about mid january it'll come up before the sun rises cool. so enjoy brilliant venus out there <laughs> and i love to show venus today because on this day in space history in 1975 the Russians landed for the first time a spacecraft that looked like this called Venera 9, Venera for Venus. Right. They landed on this Earth's twin. Now, Venus is not Earth's twin. It's Earth's evil twin. It's 900 degrees on the surface. It's a 30-mile thick atmosphere of sulfur and, and formaldehyde, nasty stuff. And uh, uh, Russia was very intrigued with Venus, like we were Mars, though they sent many probes to Mars. Huh. But here is the first photograph taken on a planet other than the Earth. Uh, of course, this was after the, we've, we conquered the moon. Wow. But 1975, this is what Venera 9 showed. Because of the hostile environment and the thick clouds creating a 90 times our Earth barometric pressure, it only lasted less than an hour before it was crushed. Crushed. 900 degrees would oh, melt yeah. lead, Travis. And these uh, rocks there were shown to be uh, from uh, six inches to a couple feet in diameter. Wow. And uh, here was a kind of 21st century redo of some of those pictures like we're doing now. Yeah. Uh, but Venera 9, very historic. The first uh, uh, vehicle to land uh, on a planet and send back pictures. There were no shadows, no dust in the air, because it's like tent lighting, a photographer like me would call it, where right. the where the, uh, the the sky is um, uh, actually a wedding day outside. I'd prefer it to be overcast skies. If it's bright sunny, you got a lot of choppy shadows on people's noses and eyes and stuff. Okay. So it makes sense that with all this cloud cover all over Venus, uh, it would no, be very limited on shadows. And oh, by, oh, soft, light. soft light is right. Like, right. like showing up our beautiful faces here on Stay <laughs> Curious today with our... Uh, our, our, our uh, <laughs> Uh, light boxes here one interesting thing i find as a photographer was that they were going to do a panorama and they had three or four cameras involved but two camera lenses their covers failed to come off okay and this has happened three or four times in spacecraft where the the lens cover over yeah. the lenses to protect them uh, from any harsh environment during liftoff or whatever failed to pop off right. you know how you solve that problem you know how you solve that problem there travis mm -mm. They made covers over their lenses of clear plastic. Duh. Yeah. Even if it's a little bit fuzzy or, or a little because it's plastic, at least you at least moves. you get an image out yeah. of there. So that's kind of one of those light bulb moments where you go like, why have opaque covers over your lenses? Make them clear out of some material right. so in case they don't pop off on now. there. <laughs> uh, yep, exactly like our smartphones and so forth protected right, right. today from harsh environments. So. We love celebrating uh, our space history, uh, Venus. Here's another view of the planet Venus. Uh, yeah, they want you to scoop, scoop mm -hmm. forward a little bit there. All right. All right. Close, close to that That's better. This is Venera 13. This is a Venus view uh, of uh, years later, and uh, that is actually a lens cover lane there. And those, wow. those spike little teeth are, are part of the whole system of its landing that system. That's cool. 
on there. So uh, when you look at Venus, yes, we know what the surface looks like. Our Magellan spacecraft orbited it. Right. Uh, and we talked about Venus on uh, one of our Stay Curious programs earlier. And this December, we'll probably have another stargazer mark about Venus because everyone will be seeing it when it's cool. lower the horizon. It looks like a UFO just yeah. blinking off and on Neat in looking. there. Yeah. So, uh, I, say, I saw it last night. So get you some Venus out there, folks. A beautiful goddess of love and <laughs> she's a, 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 a and, and fertility and all that it represents. So, I'm all for that. So good times. Well, you know what this is, Travis, and you know where we're at. This like is one of your be. offices, right? Yes, sir. And we'll make that big. There, you already did that big. Sorry. Hide me. Uh -huh. and uh, Well, here we have the uh, Orion yeah. uh, spacecraft that's going to be uncrewed, uh, complete with this escape tower and everything on it, being mated to the Space Launch System's uh, second stage right. there. And uh, big day this week where this has happened. Yeah. Uh, they had it live on TV. It going from the uh, 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 Orion going from its uh, facility at one of the OPFs. Yeah. Uh, there uh, across the street. So tell us a little bit about. Uh, we talk about Travis being in the white room, but you spent more time in this gigantic room yeah, than any place else, right? VAB was my favorite place. I loved it. The right what we're seeing here is one of the high bays that's where they're doing the stacking they're stacking the mm -hmm. vehicle meaning high high up yeah they, up there. they stack it boom 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 you know in uh -huh. segments and that's, right they're finally put the top segment on which is the orion spacecraft 350 feet high yeah it? yeah that's going to be Over up there i was 195 feet yeah they're going to be twice up you know almost feeling some swaying going up there oh yeah definitely uh, they're hoping to do this uh, launch next year. Uh, uh, not sure when they're going to move it out to the pad, but we'll be right. following that up close and personal uh, here from the Space Coast when they move SLS out the pad. 39B, yeah. those of you that have visited Titusville know the beautiful bridge, the Sam Brewer right Bridge. That is Max Brewer Max Bridge. Brewer. Uh, it's the the lightning poles to the right of that, and those poles are 700 feet yeah, tall. Yeah, yeah, incredible that this is going to be uh, shorter than that. So, uh, we're looking forward to that. A big day here on the Space Coast. Travis was interviewed by the local uh, <laughs> Spectrum TV channel out of Orlando today. Yeah, today. Tell them what they asked you. They wanted to really know about uh, history. And what does the history mean for us in the future? Are we excited about going back to the future, you know, going to the moon again, stuff like that? Mm -hmm. And showed them the museum. There was a nice couple here uh, and their little girl, 10 years old today was her birthday. So oh, she really? got to come to the museum for her birthday. And uh, yeah, it's really good. But that's what they interviewed was about was just the history. What does it mean to us? You know, where are we going forward? Are you excited? And of course I was, so. <laughs> yes, a big moment. This will be an unmanned mission. I ah. forget all the trajectory. I think they're going out. They, are they looping the moon on this, Marty? I... They might be looping the moon and coming back, but for sure they're going to get it far away so that it, its reentry speed is about 30,000 right. miles an hour, simulating a return trip back right. from not directly the moon, but our out, lunar outpost going to be called the Gateway. What I want people to know about this launch, Saturn, when we launch, seven and a half million pounds of thrust. Mm -hmm. This is going to have like 8.8 .8 million pounds. Yes. Nobody has ever seen that. It yet. will be the largest. It will be a big yeah. bottle rocket. It'll be fun to watch. And uh, it'll rattle the windows in this building. Yes, and, it will. And, 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 and miles around yes, in there. Yes, it will. So, uh, Nobody's uh, seen anything that big yeah. yet. We'll get we'll get on top of that and have some fun uh, bringing you back to Artemis. But uh, they usually pull these out in the middle of the night. Yeah, you know. Yeah, they do. Uh, you had a question, Jessica. How does that compare with the uh, the heavy one that went off a couple years back? Oh, Falcon Heavy is about seven. It's 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 under the Saturn under, Five under, a little bit. So about equal thrust around I, I, there. Yeah. So it's gonna be like a, 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 like another digit more yes i yes. think shuttle we were pushing like six and a half million mm -hmm. so this is this is gonna be awesome the it really is and the, and the saturn are like seven and this one's like eight yeah oh, okay and we've got triple t thompson here mm -hmm. telling us tales from the white room and the vab today i'm mark marquette here on stay curious of course we got jessica galloway our trekkie techie is mm -hmm. uh uh teaching uh marty winkle and i old dogs new tricks yeah. marty our 
our co-producer and cameraman for our, our show here since we started it in March 2020. And if you have some friends, tell us to watch us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and like, share, uh, subscribe, and follow us there, uh, Travis. And we need, we, we've reached over a thousand people on, on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, we've got Robert Dundee in Scotland yeah, watching Scotland. his big tube up there. Hadn't heard from Dean Salswittle down in New Zealand, Zealand in a while. Hope he's doing all right. Christopher Mick is a regular there in Hudson, Wisconsin area. He's a STEAM educator there with the right. kids and all. Great. And, uh, uh, of course, Dave Stang and his buddy Larry Pusker are up there in that state up north. Yeah. <laughs> north of Ohio up there. It's north of Mims, anyway. Yeah, uh, uh, Dave's watching, okay? Uh, so... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but we appreciate everybody watching, even around the world. We've got such great friends. George Triellis is in uh, Greece. That's amazing. Uh, we got uh, uh, Ophelia is in Normandy, France. Okay. Wow. And so uh, Dave Pirelli's in Connecticut. And we got a lot of people local here, like Hazel Banks, yeah. Sylvia Monaco, Margot Watson. Uh, we appreciate Melissa Pope at the Space Coast Office of Tourism watching right. us. So. Uh, we're taking this to a new level to give you some content like you can't get anywhere else. Where else are you going to be able to talk to the man <laughs> that put all these astronauts in their spaceships? And here's the next one of the crews that you worked with. Yeah. STS-52, Travis, was 52. Columbia launched 29 years ago today. Wow. All right. And here are the five astronauts that uh, you put in their seats. Uh, let me make that bigger. There we go. Um, uh to left to right, or Michael Baker was the pilot right. there uh, standing up. James Weatherby is the commander. This was his second command after being a pilot. Right. And Weatherby was a commander five times. Yeah. What a, I mean, I'd love to meet him. He he's was an also, astronaut. He's very tall, <laughs> wasn't he? Yeah, he was tall. So, I mean, you remember the, the first time you put him in as a pilot and then like the, the sixth time as a cocky commander you know, saying, let's go, boys? My real job was not shooting not strapping them in but i did do that as much as i could and uh yeah it, he was taller you got you know there's you're getting in a cramped space yeah so it's yeah he's hitting his head he's hitting his knees <laughs> and, short dude. and yeah. uh he uh uh he was a drummer of the max q yeah, band max also yeah, I, loved yeah, the, yeah. I was trying to find some videos of them drumming and singing and uh, uh i think but, they're out there but he he was the drummer on there uh, but he's in the middle there. We're talk we were talking about James Weatherby. Uh, Stephen McLean was a payload specialist, specialist there on the right. And left to right is Charles Veach. They called him Lacey, I guess. Lacey. And uh, Tamara Jernigan there. She's this is the the uh, second of like her third four flight. Yeah. She, and William Shepard there on the right. And William Shepard was the commander of Expedition One. One. Yeah. Of the right. International Space Station. And uh, uh, and uh, so anyway. Uh, any stories that you recall? Now, like I've said before, 350 shuttle astronauts. Imagine you're in a high school class of 350. Yeah. How many of those did you really know and bond with? Yeah. Uh, and so you're lucky to know 50 to 75 of them on well, an yeah, well, intimate well, level, probably. But the deal with this, you know, is I don't, I didn't remember or memorize each launch what happened. What was happening in my life was, what did we do on the last launch? How can I make this launch better? And what am I going to do on the next one? You know, so it was always an ongoing process. So the, the astronauts came and went, you know, and the mm -hmm. shuttle was there. I knew the shuttle. I knew the pad. I knew everything. So my thought when all this was happening it wasn't history. You know, I didn't think we were making history and right. stuff. I just thought it was my job. And this was, and now I see this stuff like this. It amazes me that I'm glad that we can still look back at it but these are real people these guys are these were real last night what i remember about that when you get a group like that that has already flown mm -hmm. everything's easy uh -huh. you don't have to play with you know first day jitters kind of stuff right not, not there so we had a first you had a, and, and incredibly sometimes uh these astronauts that are trained in houston uh the first time they see the bird yeah. active is launch day yeah or uh, uh, 217 or, when they come to practice. Right. But it's the first it's, it's time they've 217. Now tell us what that acronym that's, is. That's 217. It's S O O O S O O 17. Okay. 217. And it's a book. And it's a launch training book. And then what we did is we did everything like we would do on launch day except launch. Okay. They didn't really tank. You didn't really. But we played 
we loaded the astronauts in on a timeline like it was launch day. So everything had to work. Mm -hmm. But it was three days of training. That's when they'd drive the M113. They'd get bunker training. They'd do, you know, three days of good training, but they'd be at the pad. Well, this was a crew of six, and whether you had a crew of four or this next, uh, uh, or a crew of seven, you had how long to put them in? 50 minutes. 50 Didn't matter. minutes. Yeah. Wow. 50 minutes, and I had 10 minutes to close the hatch and about 45 minutes to get out of there. Hmm. Well, STS-52 was Columbia. They had the uh, the Lagios-2 uh, geodynamic satellite laser deployment and had the U.S. gravity payload. And uh, they did 10 days of mid-deck experiments. But what was a unique thing about this mission was they had on board some of the ashes of Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry. Right. They were carried to orbit for the duration of the mission and returned to Earth. Yeah. It is believed these are the first time human remains had been flown in Earth orbit. So there you have Gene Roddenberry, the creator. Yeah. And uh, Trekkie Techie, Jessica smiling there. because <laughs> they. Had, Back that up. Yes. I think um, James Doohan. Yes, also James. Also went uh, to space. I believe James Doohan, Doohan the uh, 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 Scotty. Scotty uh, can't go. Uh, cannot. Uh, uh, you cannot alter the <laughs> laws of physics. Uh, yes, I know he did go, and there was a payload of a bunch of. Them, but this was. I think the cool thing is that everybody thought oh, William Shatner's the first. Star Trek person to go to space. No, no. people posthumously. Yeah, actually, Gene Roddenberry's the Gene first. Roddenberry, yeah. crazy, but, um, May Jameson. May Jameson was on an episode of TNG. Okay. Yeah. She uh, was Starfleet Commander Picard's daughter. Okay. All right. So, uh, Jameson was first. All right. May Jameson, uh, the <laughs> first African American woman in space, just celebrated her birthday a little bit ago. Yeah, she yeah. turned 65 last week. Nice lady. Uh, thanks for filling us in there. Let's get back to the reality okay. of, of space travel. Okay. All right. Here with another crew. Well, there, uh, oh, I went backwards. There. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, with this crew that was launched tomorrow, right. uh, uh, the uh, October 23rd. Wait, okay. Tomorrow. Yeah. And, uh, oh, my God. Uh, we've got Pam <laughs> Melroy is the uh, uh, second female commander. She's there in the middle. Right. All right. And STS-120 blasted off Kennedy Space Center on October 23rd, 2007. <laughs> All right. This is what's... Wait, wait, what's this? What year? Uh, 2007. Okay. Yeah. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm graphically observing this picture. And... Uh, she is, uh, this is the 23rd flight to the International Space Station, a hard hat mission to install the Harmony module right. and repair torn solar panels also. Yeah. And it was one of the longest, uh, the longest shuttle missions at 15 days. Right. I think 16 days is the longest. Yeah, it's in usually there. 12 to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but Melroy, Joan, and we're going to talk about these astronauts real quick here, but oh, there we go. Oh, Gene's back in there. There's beautiful uh, uh, the orbiter discovery there, which we saw. In uh, going to talk about yeah. going to talk about her in just a second. Uh, the crew there, left to right, uh, top uh, left is Scott Parazinski, his fifth and last flight. Doug Wheelock is first of two flights. Stephanie Wilson, second of three flights. Uh, oh, these are sitting down. I get yeah. They're, oh, they they're up and down. Yeah. So Stephanie is. Uh, uh, left there. Stephanie is an active uh, Artemis astronaut, too, right. by the way. And um, that was her second of three flights. George Zamka there in the middle, first of two. He's the pilot. There's Pam in the middle. Pambo, they called Pambo. him, right? Pambo. And why did why'd she have the nickname Pambo? She got Pambo? that on one of her missions. I think she was the only female, and they called her Pambo like Rambo because she was bad. Like Rambo because <laughs> she was bad. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Can I you got Daniel up? Tanny, his second and last <laughs> flight there, and uh, Paolo Nespali, an Italian astronaut from the yeah. ESA. His first of three flights. He's a guy I've read a lot about. I'd like yeah. to meet the, about Nespali cool. there. You remember anything about these guys here? Well, let me tell you, uh, October 23rd happens to be my birthday. No way. They came to the pad on launch day. One of my suit techs comes to the white room and says, Travis, commander wants to see you outside. That's unheard of. The commander's yeah. supposed to come right in and get right in the ship. Commander wants to see you outside. So, uh, okay, I grabbed my radio and I went out by the elevators. All seven of them were in a semicircle and I stepped out there and they sang happy birthday to me. 
Well. And I said, thank you very much. Now let's get your ass in the ship. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but they sang happy birthday to uh, me. That's too cool. That was like your 40th birthday, wasn't uh, it? Yeah, I don't know. I can't count. Yeah, you know. 2007. Yeah, you know. You know. <laughs> count backwards there a little bit there, my friend. All I know is that uh, I don't think anybody's ever had astronauts sing to them before they get not. in the space shuttle to fly. And, of course, you bonded with Pam real well. She was responsible yeah. for... Uh, you going, uh, uh, not responsible for your suit being at the Smithsonian, but we went to the Smithsonian yeah. to dedicate it. Uh, she was there. I'm going to show you a picture of that. Uh, when 120 went up to the space station, the commander was Peggy Whitson. Peggy. And so we had <laughs> the first time and only time in history we've had two female commanders of commander spacecraft of the orbiting the Earth. And, and, uh, correct, correct. and what two terrific people. Tell us a little bit about Peggy. Uh I really liked Peggy. She was special. She's intelligent. And uh, Iowa am Farm I allowed girl. to say it? Well, uh, I was standing there one day, and I felt a little tweak on my Wranglers. And as she walked by, she looked over her shoulder and kept walking. I was ready to buy her house right there. I fell in love. <laughs> I, she goosed you, huh? <laughs> she gave me, gave a, little, me a little goose. A little tweak on my Wranglers, and yeah. uh, I fell in love right there. But, but very intelligent, very good. I just... You know, really liked her. I like Peggy. Yeah, she had the uh, uh, set an, the endurance record at the time in space. Three hundred sixty-five days, yeah. I think. Yeah, uh, cumulative. Yeah, and uh, uh, so uh, she's uh, love to meet her. Uh, she's uh, uh, parents are Iowa farmers. Yeah, uh, yeah. Got the, those basic uh, uh, Midwest uh, principles uh, through her background in there. Uh, this flight. Um, Carried 500,000 student signatures that participated oh. in the Student Signatures in Space program sponsored by NASA and Lockheed Martin. And uh, there's the orbiter in space there. Um, and so 500 schools around the world signed giant posters and their signatures were scanned onto a disc and the disc was on the manifest there. Oh, you ever have anything about this man? 2007. And, uh, I think so, my daughter... No, no. Some, right. Something that she went into space. They sent something into one of the rockets. I just, hmm. just struck, a, struck a bell. Okay. Uh, also aboard ST, there, uh, also aboard this flight right. was the lightsaber used by actor Mark Hamill <laughs> in the 1983 film The Return of the Jedi Boom. was flown to the station and returned. Uh, it was a prop uh, honoring the 30th anniversary of the Star Wars franchise. Okay. Uh, and um, is that competing space franchises on the same flight? And uh, no, no, this is a different flight. Okay. Uh, 52 okay. had the uh, Star Trek remains of, right. of Roddenberry. This was uh, a few years later. Uh, that's wrong. It's not the 30th anniversary of Star Wars in 83. That'd be the, the uh, the 10th. Um, ten. yeah, anyway, Chewbacca in two thousand uh, years uh, later, when it came back, presented the lightsaber to NASA of officials at Houston. Stormtroopers were there, and apparently, <laughs> it's on uh, display there at the Houston Space Center. So, cool. a little bit more of uh, <laughs> space fiction and uh, uh, crossing space fact. And uh, but uh, astronauts, uh, tell us about these type of things taken yeah. aboard on on, on the missions. Uh, uh, I mean, astronauts are, are people too, you know, yeah. so they're into pop culture. Anything stick out? Uh, you didn't have to put this in a, a locker form, did you, or something Not like that? Not this. Uh, <laughs> I do remember knowing where it was. I remember being there. It was stowed in a, in a shift when I wasn't there. Uh -huh. But when I got in there, I looked to make sure it was there, you know, just because it was What was locked. it in? A, a it box? Was, they, or? It was stowed in a locker, so uh -huh. I never saw the actual what it was it was just i knew it was in that locker uh-huh so that was kind of cool you know thinking about it and our, our astronauts uh, or nasa take things like that up regularly back in the day well, uh, for for pr purposes it, or they have done that i know uh my mother worked for mcdonald douglas i know they'd give you a little something that flew a little you know that said it's flu they did little things like that it has to be something like it has mm -hmm. to be you know can't weigh pounds because it's like what ten thousand, yeah. right? Ten thousand dollars a pound to go to orbit or something like right. that. Well, and there you are uh, with Pam at the induction uh, there at the uh, uh, that's oh, your space sweet. suit behind yeah, there. See the one on there. 
Uh, <laughs> Mark Usiak, thank you for this picture. Yeah, thank that you, was Mark. on uh, NASA's Twitter page is where we took this off of. Cool. NASA Deputy Administrator Penn Miller <laughs> honors Space Shuttle crews. They could have put your name there. You think Triple T yeah. would have yeah, had room on. for that. <laughs> uh, and uh, Pam is the next in line behind Bill Nelson, our NASA administrator. Correct. And then third in line is Bob Cabana, Cabana. the 12-year director at Kennedy Space Center. Right. And uh, so we feel the future of America's space program is in good hands with three astronauts uh, leading yeah. the way, uh, not a bunch of number crunchers or politicians. I told Pam when we were there at the museum, I said, as soon as I heard your name nominated, I knew we were going to be okay. And she thanked me. She was uh, like, oh, thank you. And I, and she was very sincere about it. So, Well, uh, uh, Marty Winkle and I accompanied you there. It was a fabulous trip. We'll, thank you again. we'll never forget it. Uh, it was <laughs> no. a good time. We saw the, some of the sites of Washington, D.C. We but, went golfing. But, boy, it was uh, seeing Discovery there and some of the other things there. Oh, wow. Uh, I got to see a Corona spy satellite oh, that i've never seen oh. before uh, one of those re-entry pods in there they so, have neat uh, stuff there uh, but sure. but we really uh uh we really appreciate everything that travis does here <laughs> at the american <laughs> space museum and because cool. we knew it was your birthday travis uh -oh. okay oh, look there <laughs> yeah. uh, the prop uh there you go prop, prop handler here make sure it doesn't fire any bullets there at you anybody go. i there. love it in there so uh buddy do you listen i'm gonna sing happy birthday oh, okay. to you happy birthday <laughs> to you happy birthday dear triple t happy birthday to you oh my god thank Blow you that very out, much. brother all right thank you very much i love had it. to drive all over downtown titusville to find that i, bet. So, I love it, uh, I need it. Uh, are my yeah favorite. if you eat it i'll eat the other one okay, <laughs> okay, i gotta go. tell you where i found them there I gotta go. tell you where I found them in there, <laughs> but uh, uh, we're gonna yeah, end yeah. our little stay curious program oh, here with a, a throwback for <laughs> from your days there. What are we seeing here? Who is that young guy that there? Young, good-looking guy is me at Vandenberg Air Force Base, I believe, 1964. And you were born in Vandenberg. I was Air born Force. on the base. On the base tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, uh, I know. I was born on the base. We at a, There's the arrow. It was a SAC base then. I don't know if it still is, but uh -huh. it was Strategic Stack. Air Command. Oh, Strategic Air. And there's your father and, yeah. uh, there, and your mother's the my brunette mother, behind there. Yeah. And, and my cousin Butch standing there. Okay. Who's an yeah. excellent chef up in Oregon. Yeah. Well, we love your. We That's love cool. you here. We're so glad Thank that you. you came on the scene. That's uh, pretty cool. This, our American <laughs> Space Museum is, uh, uh, we, we can't tell you how unique it is that, uh, uh, whoop, let me get out of there. Oh, 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 there, we go. there we go. Um, it's a unique situation, isn't it here? People have come on board four years ago, like myself All and, right. and, uh, uh, Karen Conklin become the executive director after pouring her heart in this place for over a decade. Great and job. Nick Enix, our wonderful collections manager doing things, uh, people like Anita, true X walking in the room here yeah, and, she uh, takes care uh, of me. Uh, Angie Roberts, uh, handling our financial situation yep. stuff. Uh, Couldn't uh, do it Bruce Jacobs, of course. Uh, Bruce and and uh, Jessica have have meshed very well, uh, taking our Good. YouTube <laughs> up from uh, like 150 people to over a thousand people. Awesome. And you people on YouTube just, just keep watching our shows. We need 4,000 likes for that. Let's do and, it. And uh, but we love you, buddy, and we're glad to Thank that you you're part much. of our Appreciate team here it. in there. And uh, uh, what what we. we uh, we have a fun fact. You're asking about Vandenberg. Yeah. Uh, it was a space wing base when I was there. Okay. Uh, but it is now a space force base. Oh, it is. It is. It is official. Vandenberg is an official space force base, space force base there. <laughs> I love it. Of the, uh, one of the underlings of the uh, the branch off there of the Air Force. I got to see my first rocket launch from Vandenberg. Did you? What was, was it? Cool. I believe I they were Redstone. Redstones in Vandenberg. But one of them blew up, and the second stage landed in our uh, PE field. Really? Yeah, at our school, right on the base. <laughs> Man. <laughs> and we watched all the firemen. That was cool. We didn't have to go back to class, so it was cool. <laughs> First grade. Wow, and you remember that, yeah. huh? Yeah. Well, we got a lot more tales from Triple T to tell, uh, to tell over our uh, – Stay curious program here. Right. Glad for you. Uh, uh, and what? And uh, you've got some. Okay, we've uh -oh. got a card for you here, oh, Travis. <laughs> well, thank you, Anita. 
Anita Truex, oh, so you'll you. trip over stuff to come back from here. But a birthday card from us. Cool. Okay. We marked it out. Very official right there. It you're says, bet your eyes bet your eyes haven't lit up like this in a long time. <laughs> I don't know if we can open this oh, in the I'm public. Afraid. Is it? Is it? All right. Yeah. They, uh, uh, and there you are. Cool. It, uh, and it says in there, the last time someone shined a flashlight in your ear. <laughs> okay, all right. Anyway, happy birthday. Cool. All right, all right. Thank you very much. I well, you're welcome, that. man. You're awesome. welcome. Awesome. You're welcome. <laughs> and, and my uh, little cake. <laughs> it, it completes the yeah. whole event. The whole awesome. Event. Cool. Well, we're going to uh, take you out this week with Stay, Stay Curious with showing you what we've our new Galaxy of Giving constellation. All right. Uh, Jessica, our uh, cheap development there. You all, right. all out there, she can help you anywhere in the world. She's helping a lot of businesses around the Space Coast here and certainly our business. So you can get a hold of there. We'll put your name or logo there. For $100, we're going to put a star, $100 or more, donation, tax-deductible donation. We're going to put you on a star like this. Our heart constellation is our cool. first constellation of our galaxy of giving and that totals more than twelve thousand dollars the conklin i've mentioned some the other day conklin on the left is mark and karen conklin our executive director mark is president of the local rotary club here right uh the martinos are a couple that are uh, uh very senior citizens and have been involved in our museum a long time good and uh, larry Osterley at the top is on our board involved there so uh, we're glad everybody's uh, uh uh and you know we're gonna put your name cool. for your donation on our new constellation and aerodyne thanks to astronaut andy allen andy slick allen is his nickname yeah, slick. uh yeah we should change it to slick uh he uh, uh has pledged three thousand dollars from the aerodyne company and his brother who i believe is mark allen uh, gave us a thousand dollar donation Sweet. so we're well on the way of creating our new constellation of giving four thousand dollars on there 14 stars are going to be on this so if you want to be on our next constellation info at americanspacemuseum.org or our website at americanspacemuseum.org you go to our donor section there paypal will take your money and you will see over time the constellation dot the dot that we're creating here, right. thanks to Jessica and her talents there. Do you, so, uh, do you see it yet, Travis? No, nope, he doesn't see it yet. Uh -uh. What do you think? I mean, it's just a couple. Want to guess what this I constellation could be? Of course, we're going to use space themes to create our constellation of giving. But uh, I can't read it. But we need some more contributions. Yeah. Then. And we hope that you think about oh, yeah, it. Cool. And uh, here in the giving time of season, we're going to be. Uh, sharing with you because we believe we are a nonprofit worthy of your attention and we use your money wisely. Yes. And thank God that some of you have contributed to our first constellation because it has allowed us to go to YouTube and right. Twitch and reach more people because of the new computer we bought, largely thanks to the Marie right. Louise G. West Endowment Foundation. Right. And uh, uh, so, uh, Anyway, we've had a great time talking to you on Stay Curious, Tales from the White Room with yeah. our friend Travis Thompson, Marty Winkle, my co-producer and cameraman, Jessica Galloway, our Trekkie Techie mm -hmm. doing things, and our whole staff here at the American Space Museum. We can't wait to see you here at our museum and bridge the space, the space between, between us. Come see me.